hello guys welcome to get money point pos youtube channel and um, on this youtube channel we try to solve various challenges agents may encounter using the money point pos or directly on their wallet account all right so if you are watching my video for the first time i'm olu kotun samuel lamide i'm a brm for money point and um, first and first i want to appreciate those that have subscribed to our youtube channel thank you so much guys for subscribing all right but for those that have not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button. All right, this is not going to cost you anything. It is free to click. All right, just click on that button, subscribe, subscribe, and that's it. You're subscribed. All right, when you subscribe, because of the useful and profitable content we share on this video, um, you'll be notified whenever a video is released. And also, this is going to encourage us to make more videos more videos all right so please let's hit the subscription to 1000 guys just click on that subscription button this is going to really help a lot all right so on this video i want to share um professionally with you um the precautions you should take especially for those that are into pos business or you have a pos you are using for your business all right what do I mean by that? Is that you are a BO, that is um, you are an agent, you do um, business banking, that is pay, um, you charge people for withdrawal, for transfer, for a time. Or you have a POS you are using for your personal business, that's a merchant, all right. So people come to buy something, then they pay with card using your POS, right. So these are few um, precautions you should notice and you should take, all right. So, um, before the end of this video, I will also be sharing something very valuable. So, stay till the end of this video. And also, you can ask questions on the comment section. Alright, if you want me to make a video on something, um, you have a challenge you're facing with your POS, there's something you want to know about money point. Right. You can drop it on the comment section and I will attend to you. Or I will try as much as possible to make a video for that, um, to solve that challenge. Alright. So... Um, let's go to our list. All right. So you have a POS. You are doing POS business. Everything is going very fine, um, um, but you are not well informed about the risks. Um, the risks involved. The precautions you should take as a POS owner. So this video is really going to help you. It's really going to help you to um, stay on the safer side whenever you are performing a transaction. All right. So let's go to uh, our POS now. All right, so number one, one of the precautions you should always take um, if you have a POS is that as much as possible, guys, do not accept third party transfer as much as possible, all right? Except for very rare cases, all right? Do not accept third, what do I mean by third party transfer? Alright, somebody comes to your location and um, wants to collect money, but the person is insisting that somebody somewhere is going to be the one to transfer the money to you, and um, you have to now pay the customer you can see. Alright, I know normally it's, it, it, it does not look like something that involves risks, it does not look like a transaction that is risky. Right. But you have to also consider the fact that you don't know the person that is sending the money, you don't know why the person is sending the money. All right. What if the person is actually paying for a ransom? All right. Think about it. What if the person is paying for a ransom? Maybe they kidnap somebody somewhere and they want to use your account to receive payment. You know, the customer is not going to be traceable. All right. So it is your account that is going to be involved in that. So you are the one involved in the transaction. So whenever um, the issue wants to be resolved or there wants to be a trace back on social transaction that occurred, you will be the one involved. And remember, there's no way you can contact this um, particular customer because the person did not drop any of his information, he did not debit his card, so there is no way to trace that person. So that is the danger of third party transfer. You can take the risks if the amount is small, or if you can boldly ask the person why the person is using a third party, or if you can actually relate with the person on why the transaction must be from a third party. That's another reason, all right. But aside that, you'll be the one to take the risks. And remember, you are, in, you are doing a POS business, you are dealing with lots 
of customers that you can you may not even remember the transactions that occur you understand guys all right so that's the first thing you should consider all right so another precaution you should take is no matter how busy you are no matter how many your customers are when you receive transfer from a direct customer always confirm the balance before and balance after ensure that you are not just interested in just seeing the alert all right i'll not be saying much on this i actually made a previous video on how you can go through identifying a fake alert that video is very 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 important you can pause this video and go back to search on youtube the video is on youtube okay how to identify fake alerts on um as a business owner using a pos money point pos all right so the video is going to come up all right so and please before i forget remember to like this video so that um people that are interested in watching this kind of video they can easily have access to this video when you like it youtube is going to bring the video out as videos that are necessary to um to be watched as people um that um are using pos all right that's very very important it's really going to it's really going to help all right so ensure you confirm the um the um i'm talking about a lot now the balance before and the balance after you are not just checking the alert no matter how busy you are no matter how busy you are confirm um when the alert comes in confirm the balance before the alert balance after the alert all right so that's another precaution all right so another thing you want to consider is um depending on your location especially for those that are in remote location um like a village like setting all right and you see somebody always coming to ask um for um can you do 500k transaction and um, the person is not always doing the transaction right that's another signal what do i mean by that a customer comes to you and say can you do one million and you said yes the customer goes the customer comes back another time can you do 500 and he said yes i mean 500 k the customer goes and the customer is always coming like that to make inquiries without performing any transaction all right that's a signal that's a signal that's a signal if necessary you can also report that case if necessary you can report that case all right that's it that's a signal that um something is going wrong all right or you can also ask the person why the person is always interested in asking that kind of question or you can choose not to answer the person when the person comes um later on to ask that kind of question you can choose not to answer all right you have the right not to answer the person it is your business it is your capital all right so that's it and um that's the third point remember the first point is around third point now and lastly lastly the precautions you should take um as a pos owner is um when you perform a transaction either for withdrawal or for transfer and the transaction um is not successful especially for withdrawal the customer is debited all right customer was debited transaction is not successful all right so because the customers are seeing you physically they can decide to harass you um and forcefully want you to give them their money you should understand that a failed transaction is a failed transaction that the customer was debited or not all right um when customers experience issues like that in banks they are not able to harass the bank in ATM, if you are debited and transaction is not successful, you cannot do anything than to go and report in the bank and it will give you days you come back, you see. But when they see you physically, they can take advantage of that. Do not pay a transaction that is not successful. All right. There are processes to which you can go about resolving that. Especially for those that are using money point POS, you can check on your dispute if you can find the transaction on your dispute. If your transaction has exceeded five days and is no longer on your dispute, you can log in on your online wallet. When you log in on your online wallet, um, you can go to transactions. When you go to transaction, you can go to transaction type. Is it withdraw, a transfer, a deposit? So is it withdraw, a transfer, a transaction? All right. So you select the transaction type, then select the date you want. Click on that transaction. When you see the transaction, click on view more or click on that transaction. It's going to pop up scroll down are you seeing refund 
are you seeing a fund? If you are seeing a fund, click on it, enter the customer's account number, the customer um, name, the customer bank, and request for a refund. So the request will be sent for a refund. All right. And you also have to tell the customer to go to it. So you fill your dispute, you send it, you tell the customer to go to his bank to fill a dispense error form. So those, those are the process and the procedure you should follow. And the refund will be done all right the refund will be done and also on the transaction there is a place where you can see section id code you can also do a follow-up with the section id code you give the customer to call your customer care give them the code and um, those are the processes but you should not pay a failed transaction right because the customer um you are the one that is um not necessarily mobile so you are the one that is static the customer can go and come back tomorrow meet you there but you may not be able to get the customer again if you pay. All right, that is it. I believe this video must have helped you. And um, please ensure you like this video and also subscribe. Like and also subscribe. If you have a question, you can drop them on the comment section and I will attend to your question. Cheers, guys, and God bless.